Hello, Oracles. Well, FSD beta has gone wide release for Tesla. We will get into those details in a minute. Very exciting news. All the different implications that it has for what we're going to have for deferred revenue, what we can see for what areas this is going to affect. So we'll get into all that detail in a moment. But first, just a quick jump into the charts to see where we are at here. Now, don't forget, today is a short trading day. The market will close three hours early. So that is 1 p.m. Eastern time. We will have the markets closing today. But as of the time of this recording, which is about an hour before market opens, we are up over 2%. So don't forget last week, we were riding this line right here for our downward channel. We kind of dead cat bounced out of it once, dead cat bounced out of it a second time. So is this candlestick here going to be a third dead cat bounce or is this us breaking trend? We will follow this as we go forward here, looking at the short trading day today, based upon we are, where we are at right now at the time of this recording, maybe we do stay out of it today. So again, we just track this day to day. Long term really doesn't matter. When it comes to the stock charts, it really just gives us a little bit of education to help keep our emotions out of everything when we are following it on a day to day basis. If it doesn't help you, then just stay away from the charts and uh, stay away from paying attention to your portfolio altogether. We will turn around. I have faith that we will at some point turn around and go back green again, but it's going to take some time just the macro environment we are in, that is all. And so here it is, it was at 2.34 a.m. on the 24th of November. That was early in the morning, so it was after the markets had closed. And Elon comes out, Tesla full self-driving beta is now available to anyone in North America who requests it from the car screen, assuming you have bought this option. Congrats to Tesla Autopilot AI team on achieving a major milestone. This is something we've been talking about all year long about a coming wide release. Elon has said it will be here before the end of the year, and now it's here. So the version that this is being rolled out as is 10.69.3.1. And so we know that they do have version 11 that has rolled out to several employees, but that is still kind of in the testing phase right now. But we do anticipate seeing version 11 coming as a wide release before the end of the year to all of North America. Previously, Elon did speak about wide release going to the entire world by the end of the year. No clarification on that as of yet. I do not know which version it is going to be that goes wide release to the entire world. Again, we shall see. Perhaps they're going to be looking at different areas and not doing a full wide release, but doing a very similar beta program that they had here going by safety scores. So lots of different questions that we do not have answers to. If you guys do happen to have those answers, please share them in the comments below. So otherwise, let's take a look at what this could mean for Q4 revenues. And so looking at what Gary Black has to say here, I would expect Tesla to recognize one-time deferred revenue of $1 billion in Q4 when FSD version 11 is released broadly in the US at year end. Most analysts will back it out of EPS as one time. The ongoing FSD take rate could increase once EV buyers know they can use FSD immediately after purchase. So this is something that Gary had mentioned previously in the past is, you know, the more they keep going up on all these FSD prices, the less, the lower the take rate is going to be. Because when you have, you know, higher prices for something that you can't actually use, less people are going to, you know, opt in for it. But now that it's going to go wide release to everyone, and I've been seeing a lot of people on Twitter talking about how they now have it. So it is out there. It is wide release. So the fact that people can now actually purchase it and use it immediately might entice more people to go in and purchase it. Hearing about all the great news, getting my finances in order, I have canceled my Tesla Model Y, but lead time is relatively short right now. I don't know if that's just because they're trying to cram a bunch of people in before the end of the year, before the EV tax credit next year. That I don't know. I'm kind of just kind of leaving it open in the air. But I do think I'm going to end up getting FSD when I do reorder mine. Sounds like it has made very good progress. And I do like to be on the leading edge of technology. So for me, it just came down to finances. But I think this is going to be worth it. And I will definitely dive in on this when I do place my reorder. And so now diving into these specific numbers here with Gary, we know from 9-30-2022, the 10Q that Tesla has, a total deferred revenue balance of $2.8 billion. And I expect to recognize $1.1 billion of that deferred revenue over the next 12 months. I assume the $1.1 billion estimate is the FSD deferred revenue balance. We believe Tesla recognizes 50% of the FSD revenue in year one and that balance over six years. And so here's just that breakdown that Gary gave for us here. So if you guys want to pause it and zoom in on this to read it yourself, you can go right ahead. But what the deferred revenue breaks down to is what Tesla ends up doing is they assume 50% of any FSD revenue upfront. So they will recognize that. 
the other 50% gets put into deferred revenue. So that is what that $2.8 billion was. So that $2.8 billion was the other half of that revenue. Now, the hard part to figure out is how much they are going to actually recognize of this because it depends on how long people have had it for, how far the progress they have made with FSD is, how many people this has been rolled out to. And then you go back in time when they first started rolling it out in 2016, when you can go ahead and purchase it for $8,000 you know, which people along the way have been recognized, which people haven't, how much money is actually in there. There's a lot of different questions that have to go with this, but just looking at the overall number kind of makes it the easiest way to do it. So we've got $2.8 billion. So we're most likely going to be recognizing 1 billion of that when it does go wide release, because this means that they have made the substantial progress that they have wanted to make, and they have released it to more people that they wanted to. So the more people they release it to, the more revenue they can recognize because those people have now had FSD released to them. So Tesla can then recognize the revenue because these people are now utilizing the product that they have purchased. So Tesla can recognize that revenue. So hopefully this clears up over time and we have less and less deferred revenue just because people can buy it and they have it right away. So Tesla is going to recognize all of it right up front. Don't know when that's going to happen. Maybe we'll get some more clarification on that on the next earnings call. Or if you guys happen to know, you can share in the comments below as well. And so this is awesome news, obviously, with FSD going wide release. This is what we have been anticipating. Who knows how it's going to move the stock today? Don't forget, with a shorter trading day, there's typically lower volume. Although we thought the same thing for the beginning half of this week, and we still saw 108 million shares trading hands on Wednesday. That's pretty significant volume. Maybe some people knew that we were going wide release sooner, so they ended up jumping on board. I don't know how that all worked, but you know, seeing as we're up 2% today, we'll see how we trade, and then we'll take a look at how we trade on Monday as well. But this is awesome news. This is that huge leap forward when it comes to the wide release. Now, Tesla is going to have a lot more data coming in to be able to process. And as you guys remember, when we spoke with Nick, he was talking about how the fact that you can have all that data coming in but unless you have a way to process it, it does not really matter. This is where Dojo comes into play. They have the auto labeler out there right now that is producing a lot more than a human can produce. So they were able to get rid of a significant chunk of their staff just because of the fact that they had a machine that was doing that work for them. We're going to see the same thing happen in the future when it comes to Optimus and different positions around the company that, you know, are more dangerous type positions. And so when it comes to the software side of things, we've got Dojo that is going to be processing all of this data. So they're going to be going through all of this. So the more they get in, the faster they can end up building this even more. More. So they keep on updating it and updating it and updating it. The more data they have coming in, it's like a snowball effect. So the more data, the more processing, the more they can release. So they release more of it to more of the world. Then they can see more things, add more things. This is how the AI is going to grow exponentially over time. More data comes in, more data gets processed, more people end up getting FSD, more data coming in on top of that and just keep on continuing. That's just how it's going to go. And this is how we are going to get FSD being solved a lot faster than people think. I don't know when we are going to get to level four and level five. We do of course have Elon saying that we're gonna have robo taxis in 2024. This leads me to believe that they're anticipating it actually being solved by then, depending on what they plan on doing with all these robo taxis, whether it's actually going to be on cities and streets or whether it's just going to be like around airports or things like that to start. Again, we don't know for sure. We shall find out soon enough, but this is the progress we are making towards that with FSD. And the last thing I wanted to jump into today was about the mentality behind investing in the stock market. And obviously Tesla is a great example of this. There's typically three different mindsets that are out there in the stock market. There's the people who follow the fundamentals of a company. That's us on here, many of the different content creators when it comes to Tesla itself. A lot of them are fundamental followers. They will follow the fundamentals of the company, they will look long-term to see where the company is projected to go. They will make sure that those fundamentals stay in line, and then they will assess their investments accordingly based upon those fundamentals. And then we have the chart chasers. The chart chasers are the traders. Those are the people who are going to be investing for a very short period of time, and they're more traders than investors. They come in, they'll follow the charts. Some people may say that they are long-term investors, but they're following the charts too closely and let their emotions get involved and pull them one way or another based upon the charts. That to me is not investing, that is trading. Yes, we do follow the charts on here on a regular basis, but the reason we do that here is for educational purposes. So when we do have our emotions getting stirred up, we can take a look at the charts and say, all right, well, 
why are we moving in the direction that we're moving right now? I do have a strong long-term thesis, so it's not going to bother me one bit, but I would like to know why my emotions feel the way they feel because the stock price is coming down lower than I feel it should based upon the fundamentals. That's the reason we follow the charts here on this channel. So there's a lot of other people out there who just follow the charts because, oh, why is it up? Why is it down? And some people never actually learn how the charts work. They just follow and say, hey, the stock is down today. I don't know why. I'm going to emotionally panic trade. This is what ends up happening with a lot of paper handers who are out there. They're either going to get FOMO and they're going to buy when we're near the top or they're going to get scared and sell near the bottom. So this is a lot of time chart chasers are also emotional traders in many aspects. Most people who do chase the charts and try to make money that way are not successful. It is a lot more gambling than investing. And the last type of person is the herd follower. These are the people who just kind of follow the trends of what people are doing versus actually digging in to find out what the fundamentals of the company are. And they don't know what's going on with the chart either. They don't understand really the aspects of all of this. They just say, hey, a lot of people are buying this stock. I'm going to go and buy it too. Oh no, a lot of people are selling this stock. I should sell it also. Those are the herd followers. These are the people who maybe they're newer to the stock market. I was guilty of being one of them myself in the beginning just because I did not have the knowledge when it came to anything with fundamentals or the charts. Now I'm starting to educate myself on both. So I have found over time that investing based upon fundamentals is a significantly better way to go for my wealth than anything else. So the herd followers, again, are just a lot of emotional traders. They're emotionally saying, well, everybody thinks that the stock is good. I'm going to buy. Everybody thinks that the stock is bad. I'm going to sell. The problem is with them is a lot of times they're going to be buying near the top and selling near the bottom. They're going to be losing money and not actually making anything and gaining any wealth. That to me is a problem when it comes to herd investors. Now, some of us here as content creators are trying to change that mentality for the herd traders. So if you are going to be a herd long-term fundamental investor, that may not be a bad thing. Learn enough about the fundamentals to say, you know what, I think this is a good thing to go into. I like and trust a few of these people who are on YouTube, who are on Twitter, and I think that's a good thing. I started that way myself when it came to you know, Twitter and YouTube. I followed a bunch of people. I trusted their research. I trusted their due diligence, and I would follow along with it until I learned my own but I still learned my own. I still learned what all the fundamentals are, what everything means. I started to learn the charts and why all of that moves the way it moves. And so while I love and appreciate that all of you guys follow me on here, and hopefully I do provide some education to you guys, I do still recommend that you go out and do your own due diligence and research. There's a lot of things that I still don't even know, and you guys might be able to teach me. Many of you guys have taught me a lot over the last year. So for you guys to be able to go out there and do your own research is going to just make the entire community that much better as well. So let me know in the comments below, were you one of the lucky recipients of getting the wide release for FSD beta? Which version did you get? Do you have 10.69.3.1? Or did you get a lucky one and happen to get that version 11? Maybe you're an employee out there and want to share some inside information with us. Um, but either way, that would be awesome if you guys could share any feedback you have on any of that. I know Michael had shared his experience. He just got FSD himself, said it was absolutely wonderful. They had to have a couple of interventions, but otherwise it's an absolute game changer. So Michael, thank you for that feedback on that. And again, if any of you guys have any more feedback, you can let me know. Also, when it comes down to what type of trader you are an investor, are you a fundamental follower? Are you a chart chaser? Or are you a herd follower? Let me know in the comments below where you're at. And again, I've been all three of them. So for me, I understand the different progress that you make along the way. There is no judgment whatsoever with wherever you are at in your investing career. Just share with us down in the comments below where you're at and where you would like to get to. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at Oracle Tim one I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat. That link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, we do have a membership program and a Patreon. Those links are also in the description. Thank you so much. Have a great one.